Good evening. In less than two weeks, Elizabeth Wetlawfer, the nurse convicted of murdering eight nursing home patients, will be sentenced in a Woodstock court. As the families of the victims prepare to confront her with their victim impact statements, some of those hoping to launch lawsuits are now discovering they may not have a case. Our Kelda Yoon is standing by with more on this. Kelda. Well, that's right, Tara. Some of them are still going ahead, but they have learned that they are in for some major roadblocks, namely due to a piece of legislation called the Trustee Act, which dictates that all grievances must be filed within two years of the crime. Now, all of the murders Wetlawfer has pled guilty to took place well over two years ago. The continued trauma and suffering that we're going through, which we all feel we should have some sort of compensation. But sitting in her home in London, Susan Horvath is realizing the chances of that may be low. You know, the odds are slim to none. Even a sympathetic judge who looks at a case and says, oh my goodness, this is a terrible outcome. You've got eight murders. You have a nurse who deliberately goes about snuffing out lives in a nursing home. Um, but if there, it's past two years, the Trustee Act applies. Amani Oakley is a Toronto area lawyer specializing in medical malpractice law. She was the one who informed Horvath of the Trustee Act just two days ago. A complete disbelief. Uh, people don't believe me and assume that I don't know this area very well and they'll go and double check with other lawyers. And in fact, we did. Speaking with William Brennan, lawyer for Andrea Silcox, the daughter of another victim. No one knew that a murder occurred in this case until September 2016. Uh, so we're saying that the two-year limitation period would start to run from when this uh, crime was discovered. But Oakley says this discoverability principle does not apply when it comes to a death. It's two years firm from the date of death. It, there is not that discoverability aspect to it as there normally is with other litigation. Oakley says the first thing to do is to challenge the applicability of the Trustee Act, but she says even in the slim chance that the case is won, the families shouldn't expect much in terms of compensation. In Canada, a daughter losing a father in a nursing home, you're looking at probably between 30 and 50,000 on the upper end. As for Horvat, she hopes there will be some light at the end of this long tunnel. No amount of money is going to help, but at the same time, I think we deserve the courts to take a look at this unique situation. I would in fact hope that our politicians are watching and think again about this trustee act because it's in their hands.